Well, good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you so much for joining us. It is uh, 6.31, so in the interest of time, which I know we all uh, find precious in a lot of ways, uh, I think we'll go ahead and get started. And I, again, would just like to thank you for joining us. This is a webinar uh, on the Healthcare Management MBA program at Clarkson University in the Ray School of Business. And tonight we are looking forward to sharing with you many different perspectives. Uh, with a highlight presentation by our, which I'll introduce, Dr. John Hubbards. My name is Josh Lefave, and I am um, going to kind of skip, I'll go backwards here because I the slide location and order here, but uh, uh, if you ever have any questions about anything we present tonight, we will be following up uh, on this webinar this evening with the slide deck. And we are also going to, if you'd like to re-watch any of this, we are recording this as well. But I'm Joshua Lefave, Director of Graduate Business Programs. I'll be helping to moderate this evening and I have a few slides to present and help uh, share uh, some information about admissions and other really key facts. But I'd like to introduce Dr. John Hubbards, who will be leading the presentation tonight. Uh, he is our Associate Professor and our Chair of the Healthcare Management MBA program, located at our CRC, which is Capital Region Campus in Schenectady. Uh, so John, I'd like to just take a minute if you'd like to introduce yourself. I sure would. Thank you very much, Josh. Uh, yeah, my name's John Hubbards. I am the Director of the Healthcare MBA program. Uh, I'm also a professor and I teach courses in marketing and strategy and leadership in the program. Uh, along with um, the capstone course that uh, we'll tell you a little bit about as we go through our curriculum tonight. But I'm delighted to be here and uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us this evening. Josh? Great, thank you. So I'll go backwards the slide here, just uh, other than our introductions, we also are very fortunate tonight to have a couple of current Healthcare MBA students who will joining us, uh, will be joining us a little bit later on in the presentation, Victoria and Carl, who I'll do a formal introduction for later on, but we're just so thrilled that you were both able to be here with us tonight. So the presentation is gonna walk you through the Healthcare MBA, as well as the Healthcare Data Analytics uh, MS degree that also has a lot of correlation uh, as far as not only the, the end goals, but the types of programs, the delivery, a uh, little bit different in terms of its focus, uh, but certainly uh, both supporting the healthcare industry. And in a lot of ways, students might wind up pursuing both degrees because of their, their work and career goals. Uh, but so Dr. Hubbard is going to be walking us through the programs this evening on sharing some really critical information, not only in terms of the courses that you take in terms of pursuing this degree or degrees, but also answering the many questions of the why. The why for you, uh, the why in terms of career goals, career aspirations, the opportunities for you uh, with a degree like this. Uh, and we'll be walking through some of our uh, accreditations and some of, the, some of the things that really help us stand out and, and really not just in terms of the, the students that enroll in the program, but also those that are hiring our graduates uh, and what that means for you as someone who might be interested in pursuing this degree. Uh, and then we'll be talking a little bit about Clarks University's commitment to online education, uh, some really critical information about uh, just how supportive our faculty are in this program, uh, not in terms just of the teaching, but also the support of understanding uh, the, the pedagogy, if you will, the how to teach online and make sure that it's effective for those that need that flexibility of and the nature of such a degree. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, as well as admissions uh, and what it takes to actually get into and enroll in this program. And we'll end the evening as well uh, by hearing from some of our current students. Uh, and then, of course, plenty of time for questions for those that have them. At any time during the presentation, you are welcome to use the chat function. Uh, which if you look at your the black bar that might be at the top or the bottom, depending on how your settings are, uh, there is a chat function. For some of you, it might be by clicking on the three dot icon that says more. I would encourage you to use that throughout the evening if you want to have a question that you want to get out before you, you forget about it, perhaps, when we get towards the end. I'll be moderating these chats and I'll, I'll send these questions out towards uh, the folks that can answer them uh, or myself. So feel free, feel free please feel free to uh, put those in there at any point. Uh, so that is there, and you can always type in uh, hi John, which is a way for you to make sure it's working. And uh, John will be looking at those as well. So we wanna make sure that you feel free to answer, ask questions at any time, even if we don't get to them right away, we certainly will. And uh, thank you for saying hi to me. I wanna say hi to you. <laughs> Absolutely. So 
Um, let's start. Um, first of all, let me talk a little bit about Clarkson. Uh, first of all, the Clarkson is really quite proud of its, its connections. Uh, not only the alumni connections that, that exist and the, um, the amount of the number of alumni that are throughout the country, uh, not only in, in the North Country, but all over in, in the country. Um, there, we also have corporate partners, you know, and in, in the healthcare MBA, we have healthcare organizations that, that serve as our partners. And I'll highlight a few of those as we go along in the uh, presentation. But I think it's important to know that we are really connected and, and we keep those and value those connections uh, because it not only helps our students in terms of employment and, and um, other opportunities, taking advantage of those opportunities, it also helps our curriculum. It makes sure that we're grounded in the real needs of organizations today. And so we place a high value on that. And those connections are really important. It's important about the Clarkson experience. Uh, next is the experience. Uh, we feel that small class sizes are really important. So we make sure that uh, we keep a balance of students to faculty. We have caps on class sizes that are built into our system. So you aren't going to have a class of lots and lots of people, you know, 50, 60, that doesn't exist. We believe that you have to have an experience where you interact with the professor sufficiently and interact with each other. And that's very difficult to do in a very large class. And finally, return on investment. Uh, there have been some studies that really rank Clarkston as very high in terms of uh, the return on your tuition dollar in terms of getting the degree uh, that you need to have a, a very productive career. One of our alums told me once, it's, it's you know, good, I do good, and I do well. And that's one of the best things that they like about the program. So let's talk more about the program now. Uh, there are several business programs in the Ray School of Business, uh, and master's degree programs. We have an MBA that could be residential or online. We have an MS in data analytics. We also have an MS in engineering and management. Uh, but we're here tonight to talk about the healthcare management programs, the MBA in healthcare management and the MS in healthcare data analytics. So out of these five programs, we'll focus on these two. So you might be asking yourself, well, why an MBA? Why should I get an MBA? And then why Clarkson? So the why an MBA, you know, the, one of the things that you have to understand about an MBA is that everyone throughout the world knows what an MBA is. It's kind of interesting because when you get into healthcare management, uh, there are a lot of different kinds of degree options. There's MS degrees and MHA degrees and MHSA degrees and uh, MPH2, a lot of different things that, that are uh, different forms of degrees. Uh, the MBA in healthcare management is really quite prized. Why? Because everybody knows that you have the training and education that you need to be successful as a business operator, as a business manager, operating in the world of healthcare. So that is why an MBA is important. Now, why Clarkson? I'm going to answer that question in, th throughout our presentation. The um, professionals in healthcare, professional manager, managers are very much in demand. Um, we have had, I can't tell you how many years in a row where all of our graduating students have easily found jobs. Uh, there's a growth, growth rate of projected of about 14% uh, from 2018 to 28. That's double the national average. We need good professionals. We need good managers who can steer our industry and do it right. So in order to do that, you need to be educated, committed, and professional. And those are the kinds of skills that we teach our students and, and build into our education. And hopefully it's people like you, because we need you. Our whole healthcare system needs you and needs you to do a good job and be educated at it. A little bit about our program. Uh, Clarkson is one of only 28 programs in the United States that have what we call a double accreditation. That means two accrediting bodies have, have examined our degree 
and have accredited it. One is AACSB, and they, they accredit business schools. So they visit uh, every five years, and they look at the uh, operations of the business school. And if you do a good job, you get an accredit accreditation from AACSB. Uh, AACSB is the premier accrediting body for business schools, for business education. So you might see some other schools that have accredited and say, well, we're accredited. Well, AACSB is the, the number one accreditor of business schools. And for the healthcare management program, we're, we are accredited by CAMI, which is the Commission on Accreditation of Healthcare Management Education. Now, CAMI accredits graduate programs in healthcare management. And, oh, there's I don't know, a few hundred of them uh, that they accredit, but few programs have this dual accreditation. They're hard to get and difficult to keep. We are visited regularly by these programs, and we have to, to make, maintain high standards throughout our operations. So we're very proud of the fact that we have both of these accreditations. Let me tell you about our program. So the MBA involves 16 courses, and we run these in 10-week quarters throughout the year. Uh, the 10 weeks plus one week of finals, I should say, but 10 weeks of instruction, 16 courses. Now, of those 16, 11 are core courses, three are on-site weekend intensive courses, and then we give you two electives. So those core courses can be taken online or in class, and then if they're in class, which we aren't doing right now uh, due to special circumstances, um, they, you know, have you, you, it's, it's a typical uh, class that you come to, come to the building and you take it along with other students. If you take it online, you take it either asynchronously or synchronously, depending on the course. So the on-site courses provide this practical education and hands-on experience and that's why we have these three-day weekends, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute. Elective courses, now there are only two of them. Uh, they can be advanced, any advanced MBA course, or you can take uh, one of the advanced MBA, healthcare MBA electives. And we also have a couple of study tour courses abroad that I'll, I'll share with you in more detail in just a minute. So, our online courses, as I said, can be synchronous or asynchronous. Synchronous is when you, you log in and we have a, a class time every week and class starts at 6.30 p.m. and you're going to go through the class with everybody else. Asynchronous runs uh, basically at your convenience. However, both synchronous and asynchronous classes are in weekly sessions over these 10 week terms, 10 week quarters. Meaning even though it's asynchronous, each week has a class that you must view. So one of the things I tell my students, if they're in an asynchronous class, you can't go through the whole quarter and then binge watch it all at the end. You can't do that. You know, Part of this education is keeping up with it and all the exercises and interactivity that occurs, even in an asynchronous class, uh, is very important to your education, and it's designed into the online format. In both synchronous and asynchronous, you view the lectures, or in some cases videos, you do exercises in class, uh, or on your own in teams, you do student presentations online, uh, there are assignments and discussion boards, and uh, these video presentations. So. We make this highly interactive, even, even if it's an asynchronous course, it's interactive. Uh, all the projects, we do a lot of group projects, working in groups and teams is very important in an MBA education, and, and so it is here. And you have an opportunity to build networks with your fellow classmates and build connections throughout, the, throughout your education. So, these small classes uh, are taught by our faculty who are experts in their fields. And one of the things that I wanna get across to you is that our faculty teach the same courses in both formats, both in class and online. So for example, I teach uh, healthcare marketing and I teach the course in both formats, both online and in class. 
And when I'm in class, I you know teach the basic, same, basically is the same content. However, it's a different delivery format. In the online course, we designed it to be online. So we learned how to teach online and we've taken the same concepts, the same curriculum, the same content and put it into an online for format. So either way, you're getting the same course. It's not something where your online courses are taught by somebody different, somebody maybe with less experience or vice versa. So the interactive courses that we have are really quite interactive online. Uh, they've got facilitated discussions. It said even if it's asynchronous, you're going to find that there's a lively discussion that occurs throughout the week with the, the faculty member and the students in the classes working together uh, and debating issues and talking, having discussions with each other facilitated by the faculty member. Uh, so those are really what makes this course format work. Uh, we also have these uh, opportunities to build connections with other students, and you'll find that through online learning at Clarkson. Okay. Uh, in the classroom format, all, all of our classes are uh, in the evenings. So each one of our healthcare courses, all 16 of those courses are offered in both online and, and in-class format with the exception of the current environment. We've moved all of our courses to an online for format because of the fact that we are uh, closed down. So our in-class classes are not happening now. We're doing everything online. But in ordinary times and when we return to ordinary times, we will once again offer each class in a uh, in-class format and an online format. And as I said, 10-week terms plus a final. And uh, the other thing is that if you are in the capital region and you choose to take some courses online and some courses in class, that's fine with us. Uh, we like that opportunity and, you know, that op to give you that opportunity because in some cases, students look at a course and say, you know what, I would get more out of this course if I took it in class. And other courses, they, they look at and say, you know what, I can take this course online or my schedule is not going to allow me to take the course in class, so I'd prefer to take it online. So you have those opportunities to mix and match. And because these courses have been designed to be offered in both formats, that's perfectly fine. There's no difference between the two of them. As I said, we have three courses that are on-site residency courses, and here they are. The Pro Seminar in Healthcare Leadership, which we advise students to take early in their career with us, in their tenure with us, when they first start, we want them to take this course, and they get to meet all the other students that are coming in to the program. So there you start to, to right off the bat, build relationships with other students. And so that when you take the courses, either online or in class, you know some of the people who are taking the class with you. We also uh, have a on-site residency course for our healthcare management course, which is involving leading people in teams. Now this is an important course because this is a people management course and you need to be able to deal with people uh, directly, in person, hiring and firing them. You, you need to learn that, how to manage them well. So we have a number of exercises over that weekend that allow you to do those skills and, and build those skills in the context of our healthcare management course. And finally, the last course, or one of the last courses in your curriculum with us will be the capstone, the strategic issues in healthcare. This is a three-day weekend course, and it is the most intense course of all of these here, because you still do a three-day weekend, and then you have a major consulting project uh, that both of our students, by the way, tonight uh, are involved in. So the strategic issues in healthcare uh, is our capstone course. Over those three days, you come in and you start working with your teams and you leave uh, having met your client in the, the consulting projects and with a project plan in hand. Uh, now, I, I must uh, put a little asterisk on this in that the capstone this spring, which is a spring course, 
uh, had to be moved all online. So our three-day weekend was uh, with Zoom, and the students are now working remotely on all of their projects with their clients. So in normal times, that's how it works, uh, but these are not normal times. Uh, this is just an overview of how the curriculum fits together. And, and the point I want to make here is that the healthcare MBA is an MBA curriculum. The MBA curriculum involves some core courses that uh, are common throughout MBA programs everywhere. You need to know accounting, you need to know statistics. And, and those are in the MBA program, in the MBA curriculum of, of all MBA programs. Then we have courses that you would find in an MBA curriculum, but we have them specialized to and designed for the healthcare business. So, for example, we have leadership, leadership and organizational behavior. Our healthcare MBA counterpart to that is health systems management, the three day course I just mentioned to you. Uh, we, for our finance course, the MBA students take corporate finance, healthcare students take healthcare finance. Now, each of these healthcare courses adopts the MBA curriculum, but you use healthcare data, you use healthcare examples, you use healthcare context for learning about all of this business content. So they're specialized courses, but they are parallel because we use the MBA framework and the MBA basic curriculum to organize the, the, the uh, material and then apply it to the healthcare MBA. Then we have some unique courses. So in the MBA, you have a lot of electives. Uh, you've got to give six electives, and, and in an MBA program, you can choose some electives, say, well, you know what, I'm more interested in, uh, let's say, human resources, so I'm gonna take a couple of those. You know, more, more electives in that and kind of specialize in that area. Or some students are interested in finance or investments or marketing or something else, some other field. So they take those unique courses and take more electives. So in the healthcare MBA, we feel that you have made an elective by choosing healthcare. So we have unique courses that you must learn and they, they are required courses, they aren't electives, but you must take those courses and you've made an elective to do that. So for, for example, our healthcare leadership pro seminar that I just mentioned is one of those. Uh, we also have Introduction to Health Systems, Health Policy and Epidemiology, and Organizational Theory in Healthcare. So those are some, uh, those are unique courses that uh, kind of serve as our, our electives, but they specialize you in, uh, in healthcare, and you do not um, have a counterpart or a parallel course in the MBA curriculum. And then we have two honest-to-goodness electives that you can take. And again, you can take any um, any elective uh, course in the MBA curriculum. So if you, do, if you are interested in another course in marketing or in human resources or in economics or anything else, uh, you're, feel, you're free to take those. Now, we, we also require an internship for a healthcare MBA. The internship is a 400-hour internship, and it's required of, of students who have no prior managerial experience. So what does that mean? A managerial experience means that you have to have some managerial responsibility, either in terms of projects or people or something like that. Uh, it, for example, if you were a medical assistant, that does not count. But you know, if you were, let's say, in charge of a billing department or something like that, that would count. Uh, so we evaluate your past experience on a case-by-case -case basis and determine whether you need an internship or not. To be honest with you, many students who come in love this internship idea. Uh, it gives you, not, they're all paid, you know, they're all paid internships. It gives you experience and um, it gives you uh, a leg up in understand, not only understanding the industry, but also uh, in contacts and um, capability of finding a, a career. So the internship is a very important uh, aspect of our education, but if you've got, um, uh, if you've got a, a prior experience, we do not require that. Okay. So some of the career opportunities uh, you know, come 
to us through a, a variety of sources. Many of them come from our alums who contact me or our career services, and they say, we've got an opening, and can some of your students please apply because we need some people. Uh, but we also are members of the American College of Healthcare Executives, and you can look through the kinds of uh, you just you can feel free to browse their job center. You just Google it if you want after after we're done here, and you can look at some of the jobs that they post. They've got hundreds and hundreds all over the other country. Uh, there's a big demand for people like you, and people that have a master's degree and particularly an MBA. Like I say, an MBA is prized. It gets you in the door. So the um, the American College of Healthcare Executives offers this. There are a number of other uh, job sites or job placement uh, websites that are other that are offered by other organizations that are a little bit more narrowly focused. For example, the Healthcare Financial Management Association (HFMA) also has a career board, as does the MGMA, the Man Medical Medical Group Management Association. They also have a career opportunities board. So feel free to Google those and see the kinds of career opportunities that exist. So here's the, uh, the MBA. In, I'll, I'll return to some of the questions you guys are posting in, in just a minute, but uh, I want to talk about the MS in healthcare data analytics because it's related to the healthcare MBA. Now the healthcare data analytics MS uh, combines our management for education in our program with courses in data and data analytics. So we look at this as an overlap or an intersection between the managerial and the technical. In the healthcare management aspect of it, you learn the kinds of questions you want to know. And in the technical aspect, you come up with the answers. You find out how to get it. So the MS in healthcare data analytics is a blending uh, of these two fields. The healthcare data analytics MS is a 12 course program and you can do it in a year. Uh, 10 core courses and two on-site weekend courses. They're intensive. Uh, one of those is our pro seminar course and the other is a capstone course that is only for MS in healthcare data analytics students. Uh, so this 12 course program is offered entirely online uh, other than those two on-site weekend courses. This is not an in-class program. This is all uh, entirely online. Uh, the uh, full-time faculty is um, expert in the field. Uh, plus what we do is we, we get people who do this work every day to also teach courses, practitioners who are working in the field that know the kinds of things that, that, that uh, our organizations need from students who are taking this degree. So we have these experts that not only are doing it day to day, but they also teach in our program. Some of the skills you get here, uh, we do have a statistical package, we use SPSS. Uh, we also use JUMP and SAS too, uh, as two that aren't listed here, but SPSS is, a, is an IBM product. Uh, we use the Microsoft SQL Server, uh, which is a very important skill, as you, you will find out if you get into this. For data visualization, we use Tableau. Uh, we use an open source uh, software called RapidMiner, which also does a lot of statistical analysis, but allows you to, to analyze unstructured data and match it up with some of the structured data that you would get through uh, some of your SQL and other searches. So the, it, it's a really powerful tool. And then we, we uh, have as optional programming languages that you can take as, as optional electives uh, that you can use in data mining, uh, R and Python. Uh, and if you choose to do those, you enhance your skills. Those are offered uh, online through our MS and data analytics program. So another special uh, feature of our two programs is that you can combine them. And since there's an overlap in the healthcare MS programs with the healthcare MBA courses, you can combine those and get a dual degree or two degrees 
by taking both of these programs at the same time. So we've got the 16 courses for our healthcare management, and we've got the 12 courses for our data analytics, but you know, many of those courses overlap. So for example, our statistics course will overlap. Um, you know, you're gonna have to use statistics in both of those, those programs. Our healthcare data analytics or informatics course is taken in both of those, these programs. So you know, a couple of technical courses plus some managerial courses mean that you need five additional courses from the MS in data analytics and you get two master's degrees. So that's a very attractive feature and, and a number of our students take advantage of it. Now, as I mentioned, organizations in the healthcare industry need you. Uh, a variety of organizations need our students and they call all the time looking to hire our students. Academic medical centers, big, uh, these are big hospitals. Uh, they are complex and they need people to help them manage them. Health systems, health plans, group medical practices, which uh, you know a few years ago really would, would not not register for MBA uh, students. They, they, we wouldn't think of them as a, as a place in which students would get jobs, but uh, as they get larger and larger and more and more likely to be owned by health systems, group medical practices are, uh, you see them all the time, advertising for, for people like our students. Uh, in addition, consulting firms, people that are looking for consulting firms um, are looking for our students. They are, uh, trying to find students that can help their clients. Health technology firms, technology has exploded. And you know, the combination of an MBA and an MS in healthcare data analytics make you very, makes our students very valuable to this segment. We do have a number of students that go into work in health policy, in governmental agencies or uh, nonprofit organizations, uh, which also prize our MBA. And finally, the pharmaceutical industry. And here are just a few uh, examples of uh, these kinds of organizations down below. A nonprofit alliance, uh, the Alliance for Better Health, uh, the VA hires a lot of our students, and uh, a number of our students go to uh, work for large health systems and academic medical centers like the Medical University of South Carolina, just one of many. As I said, we have valuable partnerships, and we value our partnerships. Uh, some local ones that we have in the capital region, like Ellis Medicine and St. Peter's and Albany, Albany Medical Center. Uh, we have very close relationships with them, and our students uh, make great contributions. Our, our alums are over there quite a lot. Uh, we also have an affiliation with Mount Sinai through our bioethics program and with uh, capital care and community care physicians, big medical practice groups located in the capital region. We also have health insurance plans uh, who are, are our partners. Uh, the Blue Cross Blue Shield plans. Uh, locally in the capital region, we have CDPHP and MVP, uh, along with uh, the Empire Blue plan. Uh, but CDPHP and MVP, you'll find many, many of our alums working over there uh, you know, on, on a variety of, of projects and a variety of roles. Uh, we also work with uh, you, you know commercial companies like uh, United Healthcare, who hire our alums, and uh, they do a, a lot nationally with uh, the, the training that they get. And government agencies as well. Uh, not only the government agencies, but also associations. For example, Hixney or uh, uh, Haney's would be two associations that uh, we have strong relationships with and again our alums uh, are very very many of our alums are working over there general electric a private company uh, not many people know this but in schenectady um, our health benefits the health benefits of general electric uh, employees throughout the country are managed out of our uh, out of schenectady and our students uh, work there and have internships there consulting firms Department of Health and uh, National Institutes of Health all, all use our employees, or our, our, uh, our students as employees. So there are a couple of opportunities that I wanna make you aware of uh, about learning abroad. Uh, we've put, uh, again, these have been put on hold uh, and I don't know when they will be revived. So I've gotta be honest with you, I don't know how 
how soon uh, these will come back. But we have torn study tours to Switzerland and China, um, which uh, are healthcare. You look at the healthcare system of those countries. Uh, there is a term abroad opportunity where you can spend um, a part or a whole uh, term, a quarter, uh, in Paris or in Lille, France at uh, EISAG. And then we have a, a relationship with an engineering school, mostly in management and engineering and policy return. So they, these, are, these do exist, uh, but I don't know when they will be revived. So stay tuned. So a few things about our uh, online uh, degrees uh, with, uh, uh, with Clarkson. And I'm gonna go through these quickly, but then turn it over to Josh. One is that it's uh, flexible. Uh, our online programs uh, and our, our healthcare management program means that you can enroll in any of our four quarters, fall, winter, spring, or summer. Uh, when you enroll in any of these four quarters, we have a, uh, an, um, not, not an open admission, it's a uh, rolling admission, meaning that you can start in any of our quarters and your advisor will help you um, uh, pick out your courses. This is great for part-time students. Uh, we have a number of students who will be starting in the summer because that's going to fit their schedule. Uh, so I advise some of these students, and I can tell you that they're very excited about starting in the summer because it gives you a head start on the year and on your MBA. Um, the other thing is that we acknowledge the experienced professional, and, and as I said, we don't uh, require an internship if you've got that professional level of experience. Uh, we have a curriculum that also acknowledges that, meaning that the courses are built with the experienced professional in mind. And uh, one of the things that really helps, particularly our, our professionals and our part-time students, is that with this four quarter a year system, we've got multiple offerings of a course in every single year. So unlike a, a semester system, where you're gonna find the thing once a year, and if you miss it, you gotta wait a whole, more, whole nother year for it, you will have a couple of times in a year to get a course. Now you may have to get it in class and online or online, and you may prefer the other format, but it, it is offered multiple times, uh, at least twice. And uh, you can get your uh, degree in a, uh, a time frame that we'll say is competitive. So that means that you can do it in as little as one year and as many as five years of study. And Josh, is there anything that you wanted to add to this? No, I think you said it very well. I think the biggest thing that I uh, really appreciate about working with our faculty is that they recognize the need for flexibility for the working professional. And that could be starting in the summer and then something happens at work and you need to take a quarter off and then you pick right up where you were, where you left off. Uh, I think that flexibility and the understanding of that flexibility in an online environment is something that the faculty in this program do incredibly well. And when we say uh, the succinct curriculum and, and, and time frames, really what we're trying to refer to is that we are, we are in a position where we're flexible for those that can do it in a year, uh, for those that want some in classroom and out of classroom experiences, those that are not necessarily in a hurry because they're in an established career, but they're, use, they're taking this program to prepare for the long haul for their career to, to be able to gain those additional skills and move forward in their career. So we are able to, in a very effective way, uh, work with many different types of students depending on where they're at in their career. And uh, so that's really what we try to address here with this regards to you know, these three points of flexible, accessible, and efficient. Great. Ready to keep going? Okay. There you go. Uh, so a lot of times when we uh, have webinars about our online programs, we get some questions around technical. Uh, uh, Dr. Hubbard has already talked a lot about uh, some of these things. And from, from my perspective, just to kind of reiterate uh, how the ways that we approach online education uh, as far as this, this program. So we use, if anyone has taken online classes before, we use platforms 
uh, called Moodle. It's a learning management system. This really kind of serves as the gateway, if you will, for where files live, where uh, discussion forums, and there are a lot of other different types of uh, technologies embedded within Moodle. But what it allows us to do is to take what the way that we might teach a class in, the, in person and transfer that into an online environment. Um, we also use Adobe Connect or Zoom. Uh, so Zoom is what, obviously what we're using right now. But this is, uh, this is very important because it allows us to have that live interaction in class. So a lot of times faculty uh, will use these for either review sessions for a test, uh, perhaps to go through some problems, or maybe even have breakouts and have the class break out and work on groups of things together in, in different formats. Uh, with the online programs in the Ray School of Business, every week there is a requirement for a live session. And what that does is it allows for the faculty to connect with the students live and the students to connect with other students live and so on and so forth. So these are some of the platforms that we use. There's no additional cost to you as a student. Uh, they're all included uh, as a part of being enrolled in the program itself. Um, as far as the personal interaction, again, I would just say in, in the next slide, I, I always like to address some of the resources and the things that uh, we do for, we wanna make sure that online <coughs> students have, uh, but that personal interaction extends beyond just the hour of live class or beyond just an email question. Our faculty are committed and they are accessible, whether it is during office hours or scheduling a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call, or a Zoom call with your, with your group, uh, perhaps you're in that consulting project, there is a lot of personal interaction uh, that brings this notion of an online environment where yes, there are some asynchronous or on your own work, but really what it does, it allows us to bring everything together into an environment where you are learning real time with your classmates and you're engaging and you're connecting. And I think that those, those are some of the hallmarks of, of this program, as well as uh, just in general, the way that we approach online education. And that goes back to my highly accessible faculty. They're very engaged, um, not just in terms of teaching, um, but they're here with me tonight on a Thursday evening because they love the program so much. And then again, I always like to reiterate the starting at the quarter, uh, starting any quarter and rolling at your own pace. So we have four quarters. Uh, and just to briefly kind of share how that looks on a calendar. Uh, so in June, we're going to be preparing to launch what we call our summer quarter. Then in the fall, uh, the fall quarter is next. It starts in September. Then our winter quarter starts in January. And our spring quarter, which we're in right now, starts at the end of March. So we have four quarters throughout the year. And again, uh, the program is designed, the faculty have worked very hard to align the curriculum so that you can start at any of those four quarters and you develop with your advisor a pace that works for you. That pace might change and that's okay, uh, but we do typically work with folks to design that pace. The one thing I would say about the pace, which I don't think we have a slide about, but when you, for those of you that might be um, looking to pursue this program and would be using things like federal financial aid to support your investment, the one thing that I would just mention there is that two classes minimum per quarter is needed for to be eligible for financial aid. Now, in many cases, you might have employer reimbursements or deferred payments and other things that we would work with you specifically on. Uh, but just as a re reminder, you know, that's why the average persistence is two, two classes per quarter, uh, because it works well with the program, but it also it helps you in terms of eligibility for financial aid. So I do like to mention that piece of so that question does come up a lot. Another really important um, couple of quick points I'd like to make about online education or online programs, excuse me, is, is a, the question often is, well, what are the resources for students? Are we, are we out there in the cloud and we don't really know who you are? Um, well, I wanted to share a few things other than what was been mentioned about the personal interaction and the faculty uh, is some of the other things that are available to our students who do pursue programs online. The first is that we have online orientation uh, which is coming up, I believe the next one's June 8th, uh, and that's by one of our colleagues, Janice, uh, runs that one. And the opportunity is for you to be there live and be able to walk through what you're going to, what to expect, uh, what are some of the things that you need to navigate through as you trans, as you enroll, matriculate at, um, is the, the common term. So, you know, in terms of registering for classes, where do I find um, those courses? Where do I find my bill? Where do I find all of these different things that I'm going to need uh, to support my uh, time in the program? 
Uh, so those orientations are critical. They're a great way to start to meet some of the other people that will be supporting you. And also just make sure to net that we help you navigate some of the initial things you're going to need to learn as you begin your courses. Um, <clears throat> in Moodle, there's additional information that's always in there, you know, tips and tricks and things to help you uh, navigate through the online portion. In addition, uh, I, as through the Moodle page on the left, I believe, you know, we provide students with other softwares and things that they're going to need, again, free of cost, uh, free of charge. And that's part of that investment in the tuition that you pay. For those that are uh, in the uh, capital region area, another benefit to students who are enrolling in, this, especially this program because the faculty are based there and, and they have in-person courses, we also have career center presence uh, down in the capital region campus. Uh, Bill Jeffers helps uh, support students um, looking for career searches or looking for connections uh, and offering opportunities to, uh, to you know, introduce and network and look at a resume. You know, there are a lot of benefits to that um, by having that on-site person there. In addition, the Career Center for Clarkson University invests in national job search databases uh, called Handshake uh, that's available to all students. Um, this is something that you can go online and you can look for jobs that are specifically posted for Clarkson students, but also jobs that are posted all over uh, as well. And, uh, you know, there are career fairs and other things that are available. Now, the career fairs are predominantly on the Potsdam campus, but I know, you know, over time, there are a lot of other things that we would share out with students as far as opportunities go. But just know that the Career Center is fully positioned to support all students, regardless if they're in an online environment or in person. Uh, as well as uh, the Graduate Business Office. I don't have that on the slide, but that's uh, we are a support network uh, for the students in this program as well. And you have uh, support uh, graduate coordinator uh, and others that are part of the graduate school that are also uh, with Dr. Hubbard's in the Capital Region campus that are there to support this program. You'll at some point for those of you that are uh, looking and actually will enroll, you'll meet Marcy. Uh, the, there's other people there that are very well educated and skilled with the needs of the students, especially in this program. And that's uh, something that we pride ourselves on as, as far as that goes. Advisement uh, between Dr. John Hubbards and uh, Dr. Alan Bowman, they support the, the advisement, the academic advising, not just in terms of taking off the courses that we went through tonight, but helping you really understand you know, where you're looking to go and, and what are some of the best persistence pathways for you given your career? Uh, what are some of the best um, maybe electives for you to take based on what you're, you've shared with them and helping to nurture your persistence, but also setting you up for those, those excellent career pathways. So uh, you definitely will have advisement opportunities. Um, the alumni network, again, going back to the connections piece that uh, John had mentioned earlier tonight, Clarkson does pride itself on connections, especially alumni connections, and whether it's in the capital region or in the greater New York City area or other places where there might be chapters or just alumni in general, uh, there is a lot of opportunity for you to engage with those, especially those that have graduated from the healthcare uh, MBA program. And then finally, I would say is, uh, I always like to say each other, because you're in an environment where you're having a live class, you might be in group projects together, you have an opportunity to network. Uh, in some cases, when, you know, I've heard stories, again, this is back when things are, when back when things were normal and we weren't separated at this point, you know, there might be classmates who are within an hour of each other that are on a group project and they would meet in person even though they were in an online class. So think about the, the next job opportunity or the next career path for you might be through a classmate who you happen to be taking a class with and you make that connection. Uh, and again, I, I would just say that that's one of the, again, the benefits of the way that we approach online education. John, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to briefly highlight a couple of alumni who, who aren't with us tonight, but uh, they, they've shared their stories. And uh, one of them is Kelsey Madden. She works over at MVP Healthcare, which is uh, in Schenectady. And, you know, the story that, that these alumni tell is that there are some common, uh, common areas to them, common themes. And that is that the work that you're doing is relevant to the classwork that you're taking and vice versa. You learn things in class that you can apply right away and you get a perspective on the work that you're doing by taking the classes. And we hear this all the time. The next day I went in and I can't believe it, but I was able to apply what I learned the night before. 
And uh, we hear, hear that all the time. And why? Because what we're doing, what we're teaching, is uh, being taught by people who actually have worked in the healthcare field, have worked in business. We know what we're, what we're talking about, and we know some of the challenges that you're facing, so, and healthcare organizations are facing. So Kelsey's uh, comment is, uh, is appropriate. You apply these, these theories, and it helps you become a better manager. Ryan is another example. Ryan went to the, the uh, Veterans Affairs Office, and he, he did this through a fellowship. First he had an internship, then a fellowship, which is uh, uh, an introductory job. And uh, when he got his fellowship, it really set, started setting him apart from the run-of-the-mill MBA students or other MHA students. And what really did set him apart is the fact that he learned the MBA content when he was at, uh, at our program. And he applied it, and he's really grown his career within the, the Veterans Administration. Uh, he got a, a tremendous uh, job and a tremendous, tremendous career opportunity. And another student that I, I did want to highlight uh, who graduated last year, uh, transferred in from another uh, university. And one of the things that struck me about her uh, commentary is the fact that uh, Clarkson's different. We use real data in our, in our courses. We use the in, uh, information that, are, that is being analyzed by our healthcare partners in the community. And it helps you learn about the real challenges that they are facing. So a lot of, a lot of business education uh, involves kind of case studies that are um, used very commonly throughout. In our program, we strive to, keep, to make sure that the student is learning real material on real problems for, for real organizations. And you'll see that through our curriculum. So I've, we've got a, a great couple of students to introduce to you tonight. Uh, we've got Victoria Ruskowski, who is uh, a student. She's about to graduate. Uh, she is now on the GE Employee Health and Productivity Team, where she has been an intern. And uh, I will ask her to unmute her mic, and then we're going to hear from Carl Williams, uh, who will be graduating next year, uh, who is working at the um, U.S. Air Force Base. But first, we'll start, we'll start with Victoria. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, your experience? Sure. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Victoria Raskowski. I am currently an intern at GE on their employee health and productivity team. Uh, so this team really is a corporate human resources function for the company. Uh, like Dr. Huppert's mentioned, um, GE's healthcare benefits are functioned out of Schenectady. My team, we specifically deal with um, disability benefits, leave benefits, life insurance benefits, as well as operate our global health and wellness program called Health Ahead. So I've really had, I've been really fortunate to have a very diverse experience on this team. I've really got an opportunity to tap into my interest with policy. So I have a background in public health and public policy. In this team, I've had ample opportunity to work related to that. Um, related to leave legislation. And I've also had an opportunity to work on corporate health and wellness initiatives. So obviously GE is a really large company where uh, we have a global presence. We have sites in over 120 countries. So we operate this global health and wellness initiative. And actually this week we just had our health ahead day. So it's been a really rich internship experience and it was really all facilitated through the career services at Clarkson and very fortunate. And it's been really, really amazing to apply what I'm learning in my MBA at this internship. Great. Thanks. Carl, can you tell us about yourself? Oh, uh, definitely. My name is Carl Williams and then I'm a tech technical sergeant uh, at the uh, Air National Guard base stationed over in Scotia, New York trying to think of some of the reservations I had when I was sitting back in your positions a few months ago, uh, was trying to understand what were the potential drawbacks of attending school at a 
satellite installation, but then also what differentiates the faculty at Clarkson from other prospective colleges that are within the area. And uh, to my surprise, uh, I went to a lot of the Clarkson functions. They had like a dinner and they also had opportunities for alumni and also faculty to speak with you before you made your final decision. And the emotion that reverberated immensely was just that they love what they do. And you recognize that as soon as you walk in the door and with uh, Professor Hubbard's being a marketing guy, uh, the Clarkson brand is very evident and uh, recognized within the Capital Region campus, but also on the online applications. So what I mean by that is, if you have any question, regardless of whether it's specifically related to healthcare issues, or if it might just be a gee whiz question, the faculty go out of their way all the time to, to help you walk through uh, whatever issues you have. To also include, I've ran into a few issues with getting my classes um, uploaded into my account just due to my um, payment methods. And there are people I've had to email that I have no idea who they are, but just being a part of the Clarkson family gives you that level of uh, surroundedness where it's not just, I am Carl Williams, student number 10110. It's, hey, you are a part of this family and I'm going to make sure that you are uh, ready and willing to learn uh, with each upcoming semester. Um, and then I guess I'd like to end on the fact that I will be graduating this year in 2020. So uh, me and Victoria, I think we're uh, taking accelerated classes, trying to knock it out in a year. And it is possible. I saw one of the questions where it was typically how many classes do people take? Um, I would say regardless of whatever your class load is, you have to be uh, self-motivated. And uh, what I mean by that is there are times where you just go through the grind of doing your discussion post, or if you are taking in-resident classes, there are times where you get there at 6.30 and you're just drained from your personal day, whatever you might be dealing with. And more times than not, uh, you show up to your class and the professor is there just grinning wide-eyed and ready to just give you the information. And you're like, ah, I just want to just get done. But just make sure you have your personal reasons and you know them because there are times when it gets difficult but rely on your other fellow classmates so if you have the opportunity to do the pro seminar class i did that initially get phone numbers and definitely network because it's those relationships that help you stay through the program and get through with your sanity so. great carl you're graduating this year you're graduating in june yeah, I just enrolled uh, my last three classes for next quarter. <laughs> okay, so you graduate in uh, uh, in August. Yep. Okay, congratulations. That's that's wonderful. And uh, uh, hey, the two of you are in the capstone class. Uh, did you just spend a, a minute talking about that? How do you find it? Uh, I can go first. So my project is I'm working with Ellis Hospital, which is a hospital in Schenectady, New York, and I'm on a team of four. So our project is to identify the operational barriers contributing to exceeding length of stay for a medical DRG in the hospital. So we split up the project where we have one person focusing on best practice research, we have someone focusing on interviewing the stakeholders in the hospital, and we have someone who's actually analyzing the data that the client has provided us. So it's been really, really eye-opening. I haven't had any experience actually working in a healthcare provider environment, and that's really why what drew me to taking on this project. And it's been a really good challenge. It's I've learned a lot, and I'm actually in the team leader position, so coordinating well with stakeholders during this really unique and unprecedented period has been interesting, but we're all in the healthcare industry. We all understand the different challenges that we're facing, so just being respectful and we're making progress, so it's been a good experience. Great. How about you, Carl? Uh, I would say if anyone can recall around the February, March time frame when everyone's getting a better understanding of what COVID-19 means to us personally and how we're going to quarantine and adapt to our personal lives. Uh, enrolling in classes and just anticipating what adjustments would need to be made for me to continue on with my education. I had no uh, 
worry in the world. And I can say that unequivocally because I knew that the Clarkson professors would adapt. Uh, so coming into this semester and taking the capstone class, I was really looking forward to getting hands-on opportunities to work directly within um, healthcare facilities in, the, in, in the, the state. My initial project was surrounding demographics and working with the Department of Health in New York State to understand why different, uh, different areas are reporting various limitations with, with data collection. However, uh, it changed to now interpret their preparedness initiatives in relationship to COVID-19 and influenza outbreaks within the state. So uh, I give kudos to Professor Hubbards and also Professor Smith for their ability to, on the fly within a matter of weeks, revamp this entire in-seat class to accommodate an online presence. Um, one thing I'd like to speak to about the capstone classes, it really uh, forces students to collaborate uh, in, internally. We had a modified three days that we spent online discussing a lot of the intricacies to what this capstone class um, requires. However, after that, for the subsequent weeks, it's up to you to work with your team leader and subsequent team members to develop a series of uh, team-based narratives to collect data and then also submit well-founded recommendations to your, your client base. So I guess without not getting into specifics about my capstone project, you need to be proactive and engaged continuously because there are very few monitoring uh, opportunities and it's very easy for you to get left behind. So you have to be proactive. Thanks, that's a, a very good summary. So next slide, let's, uh, let's wrap this up. Um, there's just an application checklist. Uh, you know, uh, I'm going to let uh, Josh talk about this, uh, you know, in terms of the applications and so forth. But I, I know that there was one question about the GMAT and GRE scores and what you would need. Uh, and that is a requirement of the program. And uh, Josh can t discuss that, um, you know, with you right now. Yep, absolutely. So the application, uh, you know, we really want to take, use this as an opportunity to not only go through the formalities of an application, but also be able to go through and recognize your professional experiences, your academic experiences, and have an opportunity to acknowledge those um, as we look at the overall merits of an application. Uh, so there is an application form, which is online, and that's all very straightforward, and I'm gonna get to, at the end slide, uh, a little bit more about that piece of it. So we have a statement of purpose or a letter of intent or you name the, the term, but really just a short document where you have a chance to outline you know, your career goals, where you've been, uh, what are some of the things that you are looking to do, how your experiences have prepared you for an MBA. Uh, those are some of the things that we'll be looking for, but it is an open-ended uh, opportunity for you to present yourself to us. Your resume or CV. So again, we're looking for the resume for a couple of things. First of all, just again, the overall merits of an application, get a chance to get to know you, what you, um, what all your experiences have been and how that's gotten you to where you are today. But by evaluating that, we're also looking um, at a couple of things. One of them is the internship. So if you do have uh, significant experiences, relevant experiences, that internship requirement in the program uh, could be waived as we've talked about earlier. And also when it comes to, um, in a normal uh, place, when it comes to the uh, standardized test scores, we do also have waivers for those that have five years of professional work experience. So those are also um, opportunities that are available, uh, which we'll talk about here in a second. As far as transcripts go, so again, we need to see that you do have a conferred bachelor's degree. Uh, if you have a professional master's degree, that also uh, presents as an eligibility for a waiver. Uh, but also, uh, when you apply, you can use unofficial copies of your transcripts for the purpose of evaluation and an admissions decision. And then before you do enroll, official transcripts do need to be on file uh, that do show that you have at least a conferred bachelor's degree, which is essentially eligibility for master's level work. Um, <laughs> GMAT or GRE scores. So a couple of things about this. Um, and, and again, I'm prefacing my 
my wording with uh, when in a normal environment, uh, we have we do require these scores. Uh, if you have five years of professional work experience, they are typically waived. If you have uh, another professional master's degree, that is also an opportunity for a waiver. We also have substitutions, so different exams um, that we will accept in lieu of that. So those that might have taken the PCAT, maybe you were going to go into pharmacy school or you have, uh, we do accept a variety of standardized exams and those are all outlined on the uh, Ray School of Business Admissions guidelines. And that is consistent across both programs that we've talked about this evening as well. Uh, letters of recommendation, so your uh, professional letters of recommendation, if any of you are uh, very nearly finishing an undergraduate degree or you have not been out of your undergraduate degree too long, in some of those cases, academic references are fine. Uh, but uh, professional references of those who have seen you in work or your superior, your you know, supervisor, anyone that can speak to your um, candidacy related to pursuing master's level work. Uh, and then finally, which I won't go over tonight, but if there are anyone, is anyone here, excuse me, that is an international student, uh, there are additional requirements uh, related to English language proficiency and equivalency of a U.S. bachelor's, which we would need to talk about offline. So something very recent that uh, came out, uh, the Graduate Policy Committee has recently convened to talk about, uh, you know, these uh, current circumstances related to our COVID-19 and how do we break down any potential barriers to those who are seeking graduate study. And uh, one of the things that just recently came out is looking at the difficulties of uh, taking the GMAT and GRE right now are. So to be um, very upfront about that, you know, there are some solutions that are going out there, but we are very concerned about those that are going to have access to those exams. Um, so the committee has decided to, for all Ray programs, decided to put those on hold for now so that people can still apply and, and still pursue the degrees that they're interested in uh, without having to potentially forego that over a standardized test. So for right now, temporarily, those exams will be on hold. Um, so we'll be evaluating um, applicants without those scores for admission. Uh, for the next four quarters. Uh, again, this is just to ensure that there's access uh, and that there is no difficulties for those that are looking to jumpstart and get into a degree program, uh, but might not be able to find a place to take one of these exams um, easily. So um, wanted to make sure that that was clear uh, as part of the application checklist. Uh, for joining us this evening, we will not be charging an application fee. And uh, we certainly want to make this process as easy as possible for you to present your candidacy to us so that we can evaluate, uh, get you a decision, and then help you make that transition towards the next steps. Um, as far as tuition and fees, again, we'll wrap this up. Online programs, uh, the, the rack price that we use in terms of that terminology is a, uh, about 1174 per credit. Um, but the good news about the way, well, the good news, the way that we approach um, our investment with you, other than our merit-based scholarships, which we will, uh, we have, uh, and I'll talk about in a, in a minute here, um, is you're only billed for what you're enrolled in. So for those of you that might be taking three, four years or so, uh, you're not required to pay the tuition for a 48 credit hour program up front. Uh, you'll pay for what you enroll in, and then any merit aids that you receive will be prorated, discounted every time that you enroll. So we really have a great system uh, on this, this approach of a collaborative investment in you. And of course, um, it's your investment in your, your future and your program, but also our, our approach uh, to making this as accessible and affordable as possible. And then for online students, the only additional fee, so you might remember in college, you would pay a lot of different fees for online students, it's just seventy-five dollars uh, per term uh, or per quarter, and that allows uh, that that just supports some of the things that we we provide to you. Uh, so all students applying to any Ray School Business program are automatically considered for a merit-based scholarship, and those scholarships again are based upon uh, the application at the time that you apply. Uh, you do not need to fill out a separate application. So once you, the committee evaluates you and decides you are going to be admitted, uh, then we would, from that point, uh, look at different awards that we are going to provide, and that's done at the same time. Um, but also I wanted to make sure um, 
you know, as you look online and you see what that looks like, professional work experience and notable academic and scholarly achievements are also considered a part of the evaluation. So uh, for those that have been looking into grad schools for a while, you might um, see a lot of them will put a lot of weight on standardized tests uh, and on GPA. Now those are two very important anchor points, uh, but given the nature of what we're doing and, and the, the students that we're supporting that are looking to go, go back to school, they need the flexibility and they have so much to offer and they've accomplished so much in their field. Uh, and this is a very important that I kind of reiterate that uh, merit aid is also based on those things as well. Uh, we definitely want to recognize those that have so much to contribute to our program. Uh, and the healthcare industry. So with that, um, I wanted to get out the chat box here and that's the formal presentation. I know we've, uh, I really appreciate everyone that's stayed with us and, and walked through all of the important pieces of the program. I'm so grateful that we had two current, stu current students, Victoria and Carl on with us to share those experiences are very important. Uh, and thank you to Dr. John Hubbards for being here tonight to provide this insight, not only as a part of overseeing this program, but also this is someone who you'll have in class. And I think that also speaks a lot to this program. So what I'd like to do is go through some of the questions here to wrap up if I could, and then we will um, wrap up from there with any final comments. John, did you have anything you wanted to say while I'm getting this up? I, no, I, I do want to comment on, there, there were several questions about articulation agreements, and, and let me, maybe I can bundle those together and answer them. Right. Uh, we have articulation agreements with certain undergraduate institutions. Uh, well, a good example would be SUNY Canton, but also Siena College, um, uh, Albany College of Pharmacy, a number of different, different schools. And what that, that means is that we have, we have evaluated their curriculum and have uh, agreed that a certain number of courses that you may take as an undergraduate will count and satisfy a, one of our graduate course requirements. A good example would be uh, in, uh, a, in an undergraduate institution that has uh, a bachelor's degree in healthcare management uh, they would have a course in um, introduction to health systems and another course on maybe the organization of healthcare systems. So on a two for one basis, we take two undergraduate courses that have a curriculum that or a syllabus and a curriculum that, that we feel those two courses combined would satisfy one of our courses at the graduate level. We waive the graduate course. So you have one less course to take. Uh, now, those are spelled out in articulation agreements, if you've gone to one of those schools, and uh, we can provide that information to you. If you haven't gone to one of those schools, we will evaluate your other uh, coursework within the last five years, and uh, that's a, a step that we will do to see if there's anything in there that, that would allow you to uh, perhaps waive a course. The reason we do that is so that if you've taken some prior coursework, you aren't sitting the same in, in the course taking the exact same thing. We don't want you to just take something because we require it. Uh, so either you will get it waived or you, it may be waived with replacement. You don't sit through the same material twice. Great, great, great questions that are out there. Um, so one question is how do I find out if my employer has an agreement with Clarkson for a uh, special arrangement for uh, tuition and well, just in general. Um, so on the next slide, which I can put up here um, is if you want to contact our office, I will be, uh, I can touch base with you directly uh, with regards to if there is something that we are working with your employer on and what that looks like for you. Um, this is a, an email address that our team uh, all checks uh, daily, um, so you can certainly reach out and I would be in touch with you on that, or you can give us a call. Um, and though that number is actually currently forwarding to my cell phone since nobody's there, um, but we would love to have that conversation with you and, and just find out, um, you know, a little bit more information and we can certainly answer that question. Let me also ask, answer the question about uh, internship experiences. We don't require healthcare internship experience or healthcare management experience, um, but it has to be uh, managerial experience is, is accepted for that. Um, however, I have to say that some of our students do like the idea of getting some 
experience within the healthcare industry. It depends on where you are in, in at what stage in your career. Um, so question on what's the best way to reach out to faculty to chat before enrolling? That's a great question. Uh, so I think, you know, in general, uh, we can serve as a referral for you. So if you wanted to email us directly, um, we would certainly connect you with a faculty member. If you have a particular type of course or discipline or interest area, uh, a lot of times going right to um, to Dr. Hubbard's is a great source um, because of not only teaching the program, but helping to, to run it um, and ensure its quality. So we can certainly do that. Uh, but we, we definitely encourage you to, to touch base with the faculty and we can certainly try to find um, someone that's the best fit for you to, to chat with, uh, either via email or an introduction to email that could lead to a Zoom call because we are all experts in using Zoom, to, um, I think, these days. So that's a great question. We definitely encourage you to uh, you know, visit with the team about admissions and about other um, some of the operational aspects of the program uh, and the faculty who are also the advisors can really help you understand what that, what the nature of the curriculum looks like and how it all um, syncs together as well as, you know, what is it like to really take an online course? How do you approach it and what are some ways uh, to balance workload um, and those types of things? So um, that would be, you know, something that we would definitely be happy to support you on and, and putting you in touch with, uh, with faculty from that. Um, let's see. Those classes are difficult. So, in terms of the, uh, there was a question about how many classes a student would typically take each term. Uh, so, depending, uh, some of it depends on your own. Um, you know, the situation as far as employer reimbursements and you want to try and maximize the benefits that are available to you. Some of it is tied to the financial aid piece, but on average students will take two classes per quarter. Uh, but there are some that will take one. Um, I've met someone who did three. I don't think that's necessarily, uh, unless you are not working and, and whatnot, and maybe John can speak to this a little bit too, but two is about the right amount of work. Uh, for those that are also working professionals. Um, so yeah, that, what, what, yeah, let me just add, I, I agree. And then the, the other thing I'd like to add is that, um, you know, if you take two courses per term, just think about that. If, if you were taking two courses per semester, you would have four done in one academic year, and then maybe think about the summer. If you take two per quarter, you got six done in per academic year, and then maybe in a position to take two more in the summer. So yeah, it is a little more work, no question about that, but uh, it accelerates your, your, your uh, degree completion. So it's really an attractive feature and it's one of the nice things about having a quarter-based program. Um, and two is doable. Uh, Carl is very ambitious and he's, he's pushed it and pushed it. Uh, and a number of students can do that too. Uh, you know, it, it's a lot of work, not gonna, not gonna lie about that. It's a, it's a challenging program. Uh, it's not something you're just going to sign up for and say, okay, well, give me my degree when I'm done. Uh, it's a lot of work, and uh, you've got to take it seriously. And it, if you can take those two courses per term, you know, you'll have the program done before you know it. Uh, this is Victoria. I could speak on how many I've taken, too, if that that helps anyone. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I've been in my internship, I've been really fortunate and I've been able to work part time. So I do about 25 hours to 30 hours a week. And my first quarter, I did four courses and it was a little too much for me. So I kind of dropped down to three and I've been doing three for the other quarters I've been doing. And that's been manageable being working part time. But definitely the more you take, obviously, the more the course load. So kind of assess your own life and your own work schedule and see what might work for you. Thanks. Great, thank you very much. Uh, let's see. But as for other benefits in the Apple, sorry, I'm just trying to, to open up the box so I could read it better. Are there any tuition benefits or other benefits in the application process for alumni? Uh, so, the merit-based application system uh, does uh, provide opportunities to evaluate based on you know work experiences and advanced degrees 
on the overall merits of an application. Uh, there certainly is no application fee for alumni, but as far as additional benefits on the tuition side, we, we do strive to keep things uh, based solely on the overall merits of an application. Let's see. I think that's all of the questions. Uh, so if Gosh. there are, yes. Josh, will you be available if anybody has a question that, that uh, you, they might want to give or might want to think about or overnight and say, oh, let me ask that one. Or I wish I'd asked that. Will you be available uh, to be reached? With yes. those kinds of questions? Oh yes, absolutely. And for some reason, my camera's not working, so I do apologize for that. But uh, yeah, so one of the the, the things that we're doing, um, you know, in terms of the the Ray School of Business, I do have the the email address that's up here uh, as well. I monitor that daily. But what I'm also going to do in the follow up email to this webinar is provide my direct contact information. Uh, so I've been I work specifically on supporting um, all the healthcare students, um, and in fact. We're ramping up that support with uh, another person joining our team, and we're just excited about this program and all the opportunities that are available for you. Uh, so in my follow-up email, I'll send my direct contact information, and it will also be available uh, when we do the follow-up um, with the slides, I'll also add my direct contact. But if you are looking for, uh, if you have a thought tonight or a thought tomorrow morning, uh, you're always welcome to email Busrad and uh, either myself or any member of our team. We're checking it, and we're we're very quick to to get a turnaround in terms of an answer. Uh, and that actually goes back to another question I actually did miss about uh, length of time for a decision uh, once everything is in. I'm really proud of the uh, committee that we have with the School of Business, and uh, on average, about 36 hours or so after all the committee members have evaluated, you'll have a decision. Uh, we do try to, on a, because we are a rolling admissions, we always try to make sure that uh, we're pr providing you with as, as fast of a decision as possible so that you have more time to make plans and decisions for yourself. So I am uh, really thrilled with that and the time frame that we have there. But we're so we're very accessible. Uh, I will be following up with all of you very soon. And uh, I also wanted to point out uh, before we do wrap up this evening, at the bottom you'll see on your slide an app fee waiver. Uh, we certainly want to provide that to anyone that's joining us this evening. So if you do decide to apply, or when you decide to apply on the application, you will see a fee waiver box and just type in that CU grad uh, admissions waiver there, that, that little phrase, uh, and that'll drop off the $50 application fee. Uh, and again, we're, we're really about that access piece. So we will definitely be following up and we look forward to visiting with each of you about your own particular interests and how the healthcare MBA program can really work for you. And I'd like to thank everybody for attending tonight and uh, special thanks to Victoria and Carl. Thank you very much, guys. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm gonna stay on for a few more minutes if anyone has other questions that they'd like to ask. Uh, see if I can get my camera to work so you can see me, but otherwise uh, I will stay on and try to answer any other questions that you have. But thank you so much for joining. And again, Carl, Victoria, and Dr. Hubbard, thank you so much for your time this evening. We look forward to being in touch with all of you. Thank you for joining Great. us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night.